Hi everybody, my name is Urban Wünsch and I'm a PhD student at the Technical University of Denmark. Today I'm very excited uh, to introduce the Open Floor plugin for Open Chrome. This is an update that we've been working on for quite some time now. Um, as you are probably well aware of, the website openfloor.org, um, uh, you can see here, is still not uh, finished renovating, so we're still working on an online solution for OpenFloor um, that works again, because we've had server issues in the past. We're currently migrating and renovating OpenFloor in the process, which is taking some time, but um, we are working on it, and there will be an update so that OpenFloor is back online. In the meantime, as I said, we're working on, we've been working on um, OpenFloor as a plugin for Open Chrome. Now, for those of you don't, that don't know Open Chrome, Open Chrome is an open source software for the processing of chromatographic data, but it also allows um, the usage of plugins. And we've been working on a version of a plugin that incorporates OpenFloor offline in this um, software. And the purpose of today's video is a short introduction um, to this plugin. So, um, a quick couple of um, remarks. Um, please, if you haven't already done so, subscribe to our uh, ResearchGate project called Community Tools Supporting Chemometric Analysis for Organic Matter Fluorescence. This project um, will allow you to follow our updates, so when uh, OpenFloor is back online, you will see an update there, or if there's updates for the plugin that I'm about to talk about, it will be um, published there. So yeah, just subscribe and you'll be um, up to date with the latest developments here. Um, this is also where we're going to publish the link that I'm showing you here, the SourceForge link where you can download Open Chrome uh, that already has the plugin installed. Um, this is available for 32-bit Windows, 64-bit uh, Windows, Mac OS, and also Linux. And all you have to do is click on one of those download links. Um, the download will be a standalone version of the software that you simply have to unpack. It's a um, compressed file that you have to unpack. I recommend doing that on your desktop to avoid uh, issues with path length um, uh, on, on certain distributions. So simply unpack into a separate folder on your desktop and you're ready to go and start the software. If you do so and you start the software, um, you'll be welcomed by the Open Chrome welcome screen that features a couple of tiles. These tiles are designed to take you easily to a default view that will um, allow you uh, access to its features. The tile that we're interested in is the data analysis tile. So we just click uh, simply with a left mouse click on this tile and the default view for data analysis opens up. It features a big empty window that's gonna be filled with open floor in a minute and also a project explorer that's currently empty because we don't have any projects in this um, view yet. To access OpenFloor, we click on the menu item uh, processes and select OpenFloor. A wizard opens that will either allow us to select an existing project, which we don't have yet, or create a new project. So we'll create a new project called Tutorial, select Next, create a report file called test1, click next, and select the model. In this case, I selected a four-component model that I simply exported using the Doctream toolbox and the open floor uh, function within that toolbox. Click next, and you see a notes page. Uh, this page will allow you to add notes uh, that you can then later on access again, so if you come back in a month, you know exactly what you did back um, a month ago. But for now, we haven't done anything, so no need really to, uh, to add any notes here. Click Finish, and the Open Floor interface opens. Now, we're only interested in this for now, um, so we can maximize this uh, specific window. So it fills up the entire screen. So you can see your model is already selected, and all that's left before we do a comparison is to select a certainty value of these matches. Now in uh, the, op in the um, website version of OpenFloor, the minimum score was 0.95 and that's also the default selection. We can go lower in this software version all the way to 0.9 
it will not allow you to go lower um, but 0.9 is the minimum uh, similarity score for the purposes of t this tutorial we'll select 0.97 and click compare the calculations are performed you can see uh, in the feedback window uh, the software tells you that the calculations have been performed and the results have been stored so let's take a look at the results and how that all looks and how you can interact with the plugin the first thing that you'll notice is the comparison results tab this tab is a quick overview that's actually uh, copy and paste friendly so you can select everything that's in here and copy and paste it into either Excel or Word or whatever you want. This overview starts with your own model information, uh, the number of matched models which is 14 out of 70 models in the database, a reminder of your minimum similarity score and the software and its version and as well uh, the time of the matching is also given here. This is followed by a quick overview of the spectral matches so you can see that in our case we only got matches with component 2 and 4 and various components in various models of the database. So this this is the quick overview but now it's also interesting to see how well the components matched and this is what follows here this is a simple matrix for every single um, model in the database that produced a match for example recycle pc we see our component 2 matched with the database component uh, 1 with a similarity score of 0.9873 Everything else um, is filled with zeros, um, so it's easily copy and pasteable into your, um, let's say, Excel, for example. A simplified view of this is contained in the tab Match Matrix, where for every one of those models you can only see the significant values, but it's not um, able, you're not able to copy and paste this information. Now, you might be interested in the fact or in in, uh, in what this model actually is who made it what is it detailing uh, where did these spectra come from and that is what follows underneath the matrices here that's the me model metadata and recycle pc is made by kate murphy you can see the doi and all the other interesting information that you're used to from the open floor website so you can extract all the relevant information here the next interesting thing um, is to actually plot these matches and that you can do in the tab comparison chart. starts with component 1 so you can see your own um, model components are always going to be black and um, slightly thicker in line width but you can change these settings simply by clicking on this tiny little icon here it's a shortcut to the open floor settings within open chrome so you can change the line width of your own model and the color of your own model but I would suggest leaving it as it is um, for ease of viewing but of course this is all uh, changeable so if we go to component 4 we see a couple of matches nice um, this is a protein like component um, but it didn't get too many matches in the database simply due to the fact that I uh, selected a relatively high similarity score of 0.97 now if you want to know what these uh, lines represent, which models they represent, you can easily toggle the chart legend that comes up here, or in another click it just makes it disappear again. The next thing is um, I want to know what this green component, which model it actually belongs to. So what I can do is I can hold down control and double click with the left mouse button and it will highlight this model now I go to display highlight models and I see that component 7 of this uh, model is highlighted so I have it identified and I can go to comparison results browse all the way to the bottom and get them the metadata of, um, that has all the information on this specific model there's also a couple other interesting things about this chart I can do much more for example if we uh, hold down control alt and click uh, double uh, with the left mouse button this will also disappear it also disappears in the legend so this model component disappeared if we want to know which of these again which of these um, components in which model disappeared we can go to the display highlight models tab and see that 
again this component disappeared but it will also work of course for the others as you can see here for example now also this component of Horsens 5 disappeared if you want to get back to the original plotting uh, you simply hold down control outside of any of the lines and do a double click and you'll end up with the default view now in this case you might have to toggle the chart legend for it to update again and, con and contain this information in the proper manner but um, the features of this chart f um, tab don't stop there. We can also export this chart selection either as a comma separated value table or as an image file or even as an image R script. So this R script actually contains all the information uh, including the model loadings of your own components and the model, the, the database model components as well as a simple um, plotting uh, function in R. But you can of course take this information and use your own plotting functions for publications. So that's really nice if you want to use these um, plots in your own um, publications. So the next tab also contains uh, again, information about your own model. Uh, in this case, I didn't actually put in any metadata, so there's only question marks when it comes to name or the creator. But if you put this information in there, it will also appear here. And then again, a table that contains all the uh, loadings of your components with regards to excitation and emission um, loadings. Again, uh, here there's uh, the note tab. In this case, um, I didn't put in any information, but if you wanted to, you could play around with OpenFloor for a while, uh, note down all your findings, and then save the project and come back in a month uh, and simply read this information in the notes uh, tab to remind yourself of what you've done in the past. So we can save this project and yeah, come back later. That was it. That was the short walkthrough through uh, the features of OpenFloor as a plugin for Open Chrome. At this point, I would like to thank all the contributors that helped make this project possible uh, Rasmus Pro, Kate Murphy, Colin Stedman, and a very special thanks to Philip Wienig, the founder of Open Chrome, who's been working tirelessly behind the scenes to make this project uh, happen and to make OpenFloor available to the fluorescence community again. Many, many thanks, Philip. Let us know if you have any uh, questions or suggestions for features and um, please also notice that uh, we will be releasing uh, the um, online version of OpenFloor again so that you can access it from anywhere in the world without having to download any software. Um, and yeah, just keep uh, checking uh, the ResearchGate project to find updates regarding OpenFloor. Well, happy matching! <laughs>